להתחיל להקליט, עכשיו <laughs> אני מניח לחתוך את זה. אוקיי, אז אנחנו גם רון פה, חבר שלי, שהוא אחד מהדאנס מנטיז, קצת כמו אני, אבל במקום של להתחיל להתחיל או להתחיל 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 And going after a 30 million dollar deal, which is uh, pretty fucking impressive. Um, I thought I'd let you guys talk to him a bit. More like I talk to him, but you guys kind of hear us out live. Uh, and, and I say talk to him because I've get, I'm getting so many questions from people who want to go to Dan seminar, who thought about going, who ask me how is it like, you know, what, do, what happens after it? And I'm like the worst authority on this. I just happen to be the only person on the internet who has a review. So, uh, so here's a guy who actually went and not just went, you know, got the information, did it a bit and stopped, but actually pursuing deals as we speak. So, um, Moran. Hey, Robbie. Great to be here. <laughs> cool. How's it cool. going? So, so how, how was your castle experience? Um... It was really good. Yeah, it's hard to summarize it, but basically, I'd say the biggest realization is that everyone can get there eventually. I mean, Dan is awesome, Dan is charismatic, but then when he's teaching you step-by-step -step process, you realize, hey, every normal person can do it. And then it's just a matter of execution, of literally following the steps and doing them. Because as you said, most of the people who even go to his castle, Many of them, they're, they're doing nothing with it after awards. They just go back and do whatever they did before just because um, it's hard, man. It's this world of doing deals, of buying companies. It's not easy. I mean, you, you're basically going and you're playing with the big guys and it's a decision you need to make. Hey, am I willing to sacrifice and actually do that or not? So, mm -hmm. yeah, awesome experience. Um, bachelors, I mean, amazing food. Then, I mean, yeah, definitely... highly suggested to, to everyone to go there. Yeah, so my, my agenda for this call is to get people to stop bugging me and go to ask you, because uh, again, I, just, I was just there and you're actually doing it. It's like, it's like there's this funny analogy I heard. It's like, uh, I, I got, it's like I got punched by Mike Tyson. So people ask me for boxing advice, but you're actually in the ring and, <laughs> and actually doing it. So, so, so let's just ask like straight up, Who is this for? Because um, I noticed the same thing. Like almost nobody actually does anything with it after the seminar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair, fair question. I'd say, so I'll tell you my story. And based on that, I guess, I guess some, of, some of the people who watch it will, could relate, some not. Um, mm -hmm. At least for me, that the main reason to go and start to, to try to get into this world of buying businesses is because I didn't want to run a business anymore. And there's a big difference be between running a business and owning a business. Um, that was a big one for me. I don't want to do the daily menial tasks. I don't want to watch marketing campaigns. I don't want to um, deal with employees or although I guess I do a little bit, but I want to be, I want to call the shots the, the kind of like the important, I want to make the important decisions. I want to be shareholder in a business. I don't want to be a manager of the business. That's kind of like how I got into this in the, in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then um, you're asking, who is this for? For me, uh, I love everything that got anything to do with the art of the deal. So talking to people, uh, meeting interesting people. I mean, right now, my day is mostly with meeting and talking with really, really interesting people. I mean... As you said, I'm negotiating a deal with a business doing almost 30 million a year right now in sales. And I'm in constant touch with the business owner. He's revealing everything about the business to me. And I'd say that's, I mean, if you want to learn about business, you will learn more about business in two months of talking to business owner who want to sell the business to you than anything else out there in the world. Because you're a potential buyer of the business. So There's no one out there in the world that a potential seller will tell so much about his business to. I mean, not even his, his yeah. wife or, I mean, no one. Maybe you and his accountant know, let's, know let's, uh, let, let's just make a, a, a small point clear. You're not like this uh, super rich guy who owns multiple businesses already. You, basically, I'll, I'll say as bluntly as possible, you don't have $30 million right now to buy the business, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, 
No, not at all. Um, although I did start a few successful companies, um, some of them became really, really successful. Um, but as you said, I don't have 30 million in the bank to buy businesses. And if you're going to, I mean, I'm sure you know, and if people who watch it, they're going to search about the richest people in the world, they'll realize that they're building their wealth um, mostly without using their personal capital. Um, and it's just a matter of cost of capital. Even if you have millions in the bank, why would you want to go and use them to buy a business where you could put, so you, let's say you have amount of money, you can put that money right now, invest it in pretty passive income streams and get like 8% for it, right? At the same time, you can go and buy a business and get all the money in the world that you want, either for free if you give equity in return or for 5% um, interest. So why would I want to use my own capital if I can get more for it somewhere else and I can play with so much more money of other people? Uh, it's just a matter of cost of capital and leverage and just growing faster. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but what you basically did was uh, you reached out to really successful people. Uh, you used them to have to create like the you know, multimillionaires and highly successful people and you basically used that to create the perception of like a really high class company that, um, you know, like who would be affiliated with Bill Gates, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then you basically, and that just to get you through the door to like create the perception of a really successful company. And now you're through the door, you talk to people about buying their businesses. And if you find a really good deal, there's these huge financial institutions, the banks, uh, investment firms with billions of dollars, who they don't care about you. I remember you said you, they care about the deal. Like if it's a good deal, they'll, you know, not every time, but they, they'll seriously consider financing it for you because they know the business will pay back the, the money. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you Which got it. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, exactly. And I'll tell you even more. So I, I did few deals without any capital. Um, and the way I did it is I basically provided solutions to businesses. I mean, there were smaller deals, like <laughs> basically those are usually businesses that are doing up to 1 million a year in sales. Some of them would give you equity for, in return for just value that you can give them. Um, so I'll give you an example. I had a conversation with a friend of mine and he had a marketing agency he wanted to get rid of. And he didn't know if he want to close it or sell it or whatever. And what I told him is, hey, man, I'll, I don't mind taking the business on me. Um, and you just go and stay, do whatever you want. And what I told him is, if you want, I'll take 80% of the business. You'll have 20%. And I showed him that I know business better than him. So that even if you'll have only 20%, um, this 20% will eventually be worth much more than his current 100% in the long run just by having me being the owner of the business. Um, I used to yeah, work massive. it out. That, that was a while ago, but um, I would suggest people who just want to get into this world of deals, maybe to just do that a little bit first. Um, but then, yeah, with the big deals, you got to use financial institutions. You got to good, you got to use a combination of debt and equity. Tons of institutions out there who can help you with that. Um, obviously it depends where the deal is, depends on the industry, all that stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a matter of structuring the deal in a way that, um, ideally, you will need to give up uh, the least amount of equity and you could use uh, ideal. So I, I don't know if you want to get into it, but uh, ideally you want to get uh, as much as you can debt. Uh, you want to leverage the assets in the business um, and basically do debt financing. Um, and if that's not enough, then you can use equity investors. So yeah, that's, that's how you basically do those deals. Mm -hmm. So how can like somebody who you know because people for some some people when they think about dan uh they, they look at it like you know he's the messiah or something uh these people really piss me off like i get people that you know contact me i'm not even kidding like three times a week probably in comments or, or messages tell me like you know Dan, Dan will kick your ass, you know, Dan, Dan is like this, and everybody glorifies him, you know, all the guys who don't actually go there. Um, so let's say you don't go there, okay, you know, fuck the castle, I don't want to put $20,000, and even Dan says, like, don't come, like he says, only come if you have to. Mm -hmm. um, how, how can somebody learn 
these skills? Like, how can somebody, because they're simple, but you kind of need somebody to help you. And at the same time, you also need to actually know what, what to do. Yeah. Well, first of all, and, and as you said, Dan, Dan is saying that, I mean, all of his content is free. It's out there. I mean, you're going to go to the castle. You're not, you're not going to get that much more other than his personal. Um, it's going to be your personal coach and accountability. If you want to learn it, I'd say the best way to learn is to just literally just jump there and try to do that. Um, that's the best way you learn. Like, you know, you can read hundreds of books, but I mean, you can read hundreds of books about how to drive a car, right? But in the end of the day, you're going to learn more about driving a car in 10 minutes of driving uh, versus reading hundreds of books about it. So I'd say go and try and do that. And usually most of the people who go to Dan's Castle, they already have existing business. So I'd say you want to start thinking about how can you create more value to your existing business. And there's two ways to grow a business. And Dan is talking about it as well. There's an organic way. And there's uh, basically internal and external way or organic and by acquisitions. Um, I would suggest people who already have a business try and think about growing by acquisitions versus organic because you can grow in years worth of sale in literally in an afternoon in one acquisition. Like you can, let's say you have a business doing 1 million a year in sales right now. You can literally go out there, buy your competitors doing 1 million a year in sales. And the moment you buy him, you already business making 2 million a year in sales. Um, it just it's so much, such a faster way to grow. And it's literally required the same amount of work of sometimes just go out there and try, instead of trying to acquire another company, go and try to acquire, sorry, in, instead of trying to go and acquire another um, client, go and acquire another company. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go and do that. For me, I can tell you personally, there's few people I help who literally messaged me after watching my testimonial with Dan. And what I told him is, hey, man, I don't mind you watching everything I'm doing. And I'm literally happy to pay people like 10, 20 grand per deal I close or give them equity in deals just for them referring deals to me. So um, let's say anyone out there got a deal or someone he knows who want to sell his business. Like I'm happy. I mean, he's going to learn from me all throughout the process just because I want to do the deals. Like, right, I'm, I'm just trying to be as transparent as I can. I'm selfish. I want to do more deals. That's my agenda in the end of the day. So if someone got access to deals that I don't have, just because they're in a different geographic location and they have access to networks that I don't have, I don't mind literally them watching my back, seeing everything I'm doing. Um, yeah, and learning from me um, while I do the deal and they get either referral fee or equity. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. I mean, I, I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of jealous on one hand, you know, because I kind of found my destiny in coaching, but I also had like a really strong itch for that. Like you said, being the owner, uh, doing these jumps in acquisitions. Um, it's a big thing. It's, it's like you literally there's the box and you literally are not allowed. You don't allow yourself to think in the box. You have to think about the box. And, uh, and the moment you think in the box, it's like you, you can lose yourself in it. You know, you're going to, oh, let's fix this, let's change that. But you have to always keep yourself in this big focus, a big picture. Yeah. And uh, I, I just couldn't do that, to be honest. Like, I just, it was too hard for me. Um, one day, I'll, I, I want to do it, but, you know, in acquisitions. But it's still not, I'm not, still not there. So I really admire you for, for having that courage because basically we – I think in terms of business success, you were more, more successful than me when you started. Um, maybe a bit more, maybe much more, but I think you were more successful. And so you had even more incentives to, you know. To you rest on my lowers, yeah. Yeah, to just stay with the business. Yeah, and I'll tell you something about that. Um, so it came to me and it's literally coming back to that realization that I don't want to be in the business anymore. Um, I remember I used to have that business. Um, we had this crazy marketing business. Um, I don't want to get into it, but basically I used to watch and uh, basically navigate hundreds or maybe even thousands of campaigns every day. And I remember it's some day I was like, I don't care how much money this shit makes me. I don't want to do it. This any like I don't want to do it anymore. Like I, I was sick of it. Just like 
I literally, I wanted to, to shoot myself, just, just do anything but that. So I was like, there's no fucking way I want to do that. And I literally started asking myself, okay, let's say I had all the options in the world. Let's say um, there's no chance I could fail. Let's say fear is not, not an option. Like there's no fear out there. What would I want to do with my day? Like what I want to do every day, no matter what, if it involves money or not. And at the same time, I started watching TV shows like Shark Tank, Dragon's Den, The Prophet, which I don't know if you, you heard, prob- probably heard about them. But um, I was basically watching investors who sitting out there and having people come in and pitching their ideas and businesses to them. And it just blew my mind. I, I, I literally, I was like, holy shit, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to be there. I, wanna, I want people to come to me. Mm-hmm. wanting me in their business i want to be i want to call the shots i don't want to i don't want to do the i want to do stuff that actually leverage like mm-hmm. i have I'm, I'm very grateful to have amazing mentors board members right now and i see some of them and i, I can throw the names like carl Allen and jeremy harbour and cole mirza and uh, naftali tilson really really amazing people who together with them they did more than 100 billion dollar worth of deals and i'm really grateful to have them and i see they're like i'm grateful to to to, to spend some time with them and i saw they're kind of like what they're doing with their days and it's all really leveraged it's just like there's no chance that they'll do action that isn't potentially going to make them literally millions um, so that's what i want to do i want to do stuff that actually going to bring me back amazing results and not just uh, another client, right? So, yeah. yeah. The, the difference between, yeah, you and me is that I'm like, yeah, I want to get there, but I'm like, okay, I'll build myself up slowly as a brand. I'll they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you're like, okay, let's just buy that shit up and, and go there. <laughs> yeah, and fair enough. And everyone got his own path, right? It's, it's not like this one is better than the other. It's just like, for me, I just realized there are certain things I want to do every day and there are certain things I don't want to do. And it, it just turned out this way that I came across the, the path of doing deals, going back acquisitions. And since then, I, I literally learned that, I mean, the biggest companies out there, that's what they're doing. I mean, if you're going to learn about tech companies, even like Facebook right now, right? The way that they have to grow is growing by acquisitions, by buying other companies. Otherwise, they can't meet their share values, their, their shareholders, um, demands right they want i mean they want the business to grow and most businesses can't go organically as fast as they can with buying businesses that's why you see crazy acquisitions like whatsapp and all the other big guys instagram etc yeah absolutely so how can people contact you if they're interested can they ask you to help them or how does it work um yeah i'm, I'm happy to to give you my email so my email is uh, moran it's M-O-R-A-N at abdassets.com. That's my company, ABD Assets. Um, feel free to email me. I'm, I'm happy if you really want to get into this world of uh, doing deals and acquisitions and buying companies and you're just sick of doing boring stuff, you actually want to wake up and do fun stuff. I'm, I don't mind doing like a short call with you and just figure out if, you, if it's a fit. And hey, if you're, if you're in a specific geographic location that I'm looking for, uh, for deals then i'm happy to maybe even uh, find us ways to do to do stuff together awesome so either like as a quote-unquote affiliate a mega 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 affiliate uh mm-hmm. just make a referral for a business and that could profit a, you know a lot or basically if somebody is actually interested in learning more about that then you say you could help them a bit show them the ropes and then hopefully do you know deals together and make big shit happen yeah, exactly. Or if, if they have a business that they want to sell, that's great as well. Um, I, I guess it really depends on the person. I'm, I'm happy to have short calls with people and figure out if, it, if it's a fit or not. Yeah, so you, so you made deals your life, basically. But just like me with yeah. coaching, you're like, you have, you know. Pretty much, yeah. That's what I want to do. Um, get me excited. I'm talking to awesome, interesting people. It gives me the chance to... It's give me an excuse to travel the world. Um, and I think it's the best business for ADD people, to be honest. Um, for me, I always wanted to do new stuff. And this is literally the perfect business for ADD people, but just because you can be involved in so many transactions at the same time. Yeah, everything is, everything is big picture. You don't, you're never going to exactly. the details. So you're always like... Da, 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 like, like exactly, yeah. And uh, it's, all, it's all social. Like you just, it's all about talking to people, the right people and 
I, I, also, I also noticed in my experience after the castle how it's like a shortcut uh, to meeting successful people where you're like, you have this representation of yourself, like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm looking to buy a business, for example, in this sort of field, you know, to, to uh, a fragmented industry, you know, all that big words. And immediately, like the guy who's like a multimillionaire is like, yeah, sure, let's meet, you know, when can you do it? Um, it's crazy. It's crazy how, yeah. how, how fast they respond to this language. And same goes to accountants and lawyers. Like as soon as you tell them that you want to buy companies, they're like, I mean, I've met the, the biggest four, the big, the big four companies. I mean, Dan is talking about it. Get yourself big four accounting firms and stuff like that. Um, I don't know about other people's experiences, but for me, as soon as I told them, hey, I'm looking to buy companies, I have here, here are the people on my board. I mean, I went to those meetings and all the, literally all the, the high senior partners, I came to the meetings and there were like eight partners sitting with me and in the room just waiting for me to, I mean, that, that's how they're making money. Everyone, accountants, lawyers, investment bankers, that's how they make their big money. And as soon as they hear about someone even thinking about doing acquisitions, they're like, holy shit, I'll, I want to talk to this guy. Yeah, you, you could be a 14-year-old kid. You're like, yeah, I want to do acquisitions. Exactly. Like, like, yeah, sure, sure. And they respect you. They actually treat you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean um, it, it was crazy for me. Like when I was doing that with also with the accounting, I just stopped after I got the board, like after I got the millionaires and everything. I was like, no, this is not for me. No, no, I just bam, like went off to Thailand for a month and decided <laughs> to do coaching, um, to, to go back to coaching. But um, um, because I didn't do it because I wanted to do it deeply. I did it because I, was, I, I, I wasn't growing fast enough in coaching. So I thought, oh, so if I make, uh, you know, hundreds of millions, that will make me feel happy again. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, this, the secret society thing, you know, the 1% and all that stupid shit that people talk yeah. about. It, it's not, of course, it's not true. You know, everybody can become successful and stuff. But, but when you do that, you sort of realize that there is kind of a, a secret society. Like you just, you talk about, when you stop talking about growing and you start talking about like the jumps, you know, the equity and the uh, acquisitions. Like people treat you differently suddenly. They're like, "Oh, this is a this isn't like a guy who's trying to make it. This is a player." Yeah. So, yeah, and, so. It's, and it all comes down to, and Dan's talking about it as well. It, it all comes down to um, just a different thinking, right? I mean, it's all about just thinking bigger. Because as soon as you, yeah. And I know, I know you're a big fan of Grant Cardone, but he's talking about it as well. He's just like, "Hey, just have big goals." And as soon as you have those goals, your mind will start to look at ways to get to those goals. Like if you're going to get the goal to, to make 100 million, your actions are going to be very different than if you have a goal to make a uh, few Yeah, grand. But, but, but this is like a side tangent. This is like the most important point, I think, for anybody listening. Uh, mm -hmm. I call it like slicing the pie. When you have a, a, a business that makes like 100,000 a month, basically you can slice it and give, you know, 10% to the salespeople, this much to, you can basically yeah. start delegating out. But you don't have to, but, but with something like the acquisitions, you can literally, it's not like when you have a big idea, like, oh, I want to be a millionaire, I'm going to be, and everybody's like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever, you know, fine, yeah, sure, little boy. When you're actually in the financial thing, when you're like, hey, I'll, I want to make a $20 million deal, and you're nobody, you haven't made any serious money, not, no track record, but you say that, and you go up to a multimillionaire, and you're like, hey, uh, I'll give you 5% of the deal if you work with me if you if you're confident enough they probably will <laughs> i agree i agree and that's something people don't realize and i remember coming out of the castle uh, very nervous to talk to my first potential board members but then after you i mean when you realize that hey i'm offering them an opportunity to get free equity in literally a multi multi million dollar business for free all they need to do is yeah. maybe be on the phone with me every now and then and just talk to me yeah I mean, there's no cool. there's no downside like exactly i mean anything exactly even legally you could write in the contracts that they got no downside like literally and yeah and people out there are nervous to talk to people about being on their board and i'm like why i mean who would, yeah who would say no to get free equity in something that even if it won't make i mean potentially it could make them millions of on millions mm -hmm. so. yeah yeah like uh like with my when i was approaching you know also approaching millionaires they, it was always two things two problems the first one was nobody took me seriously but but not because i'm a kid but because i was stuttering i was like da, 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 da. I, I, I couldn't answer any question but i just did so many of these like condensed in a month 
that by the end of the month, I was like, da, 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 and I knew all the questions. And they're like, yes, but what about the, um, what, what about the financing? Oh, yeah, when yeah. we have the deal, then the thing will pay for itself. And, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. and they're like, okay. And then the next question, the next problem was always, do I have legal liability in this? <laughs> and, so, and I was like, no. And they're like, can you prove it? Yes. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you literally just said what we talked about, the fact that you learned so much more just by doing it, right? Just by calling yeah. people and failing. I mean, the best way to move forward is to just, just progress your way to success by failing. That's, that's the best way. I mean, you're going to learn so much more just by yeah, I, I, I didn't call people. I just sent like 10,000 emails <laughs> and I sent a really good letter. Um, yeah. and, and that's I still taking about, action. Yeah. Yeah. And about exactly. 20 people, 25 people actually, you know, told me, okay, let's meet. It's like, it's like doctors and, uh, and, and millionaires and CEOs. And I'm like, what the, what? <laughs> like awesome. every single one of these people, like, I'm, you know, I'm thinking big, but also like if they just give me like, you know, like $50,000, I would be like happy for a couple of months. Yeah, and for them it would be like nothing. It was crazy. It was crazy meeting these yeah. people. Um, so yeah, it's really a ride. It's it's a fucking ride. And but the amazing thing is that again, it's an idea. It's it's not it's not like you have anything. You're like, hey, I'm gonna do this much. And the, who's who listens to you? The successful people. <laughs> like yeah. like yeah. like the guys who made it. When they hear somebody's like, oh, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'm gonna do this. Then they pay attention. All the average people, the ninety eight, the ninety nine percent. They're like, nah, 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 it's not good. Yeah. And, and even investors, it's funny that you say that because, I mean, th there's something out there today. Everywhere I look, there are books about starting a startup, um, videos about starting a startup, seminars, motivational videos, everything about just starting, taking an idea and starting something from scratch. And there's nothing wrong about it, right? But it's so much easier to go out there and make your startup about buying existing profitable businesses. Just because, I mean, as you said, people are going to take you much more seriously, even if it's uh, your board members or investors or financial institutions. And just, I mean, just check the stats out there. Most of the uh, like Silicon Valley startups, they're going to fail in the first few years, right? I mean, your model is awesome. Just like provide value to people and get some kind of money for that. But all the ideas like technology businesses, most of them are going to fail. And what we're doing here with the, in the acquisition world is that we're basically going into businesses that already have track record, already have brand recognition, already have employees, already have like a list of clients. And you literally play on their assets, assets that sometimes took them years to buy. Like I had the conversation um, like two weeks ago with a business that's existing, like the owner is like 85 years old. And he owned the business like more than 40 years. So just imagine that the business is making millions. It got track record of, I mean, so many years, like clients who loves the business. So why would I put my time into starting a business from scratch where I can literally use the same time buy a business that's already making millions? Yeah. And, and I'll, just, I'll just add and say like, so one of my mentors is, is Cole Mirza, right? He's, he's this... In his, is the, in his 30s, he's worth like 600 million in net worth. And he's investing in startups in like uh, different stages of startups. Uh, and he knows that most of them are going to fail. Like he knows that like 90 plus percent, like 99% of them will fail. But he knows that for him, even if he put his money in all those different businesses, most of them are going to fail. He knows that he will make more money from that one business that will be successful and it will cover all of his losses, right? So I'm saying, cool, that's awesome as an investor because it's just his play money and he playing the numbers game, right? You know, 1% will make him enough money. But then I'm saying, why would you go and start a business from scratch and try to be that 1% out there? Yeah, and yeah. It or just, also, also, Grant says, you know, if you're going to, raise money you know don't get don't ask for like a million or five million or ten million that's why nobody listens to you ask yeah. for like 300 million and then you know that at least they listen now because because yeah. at least you know it's it's it, so why would they you know wait why would they risk a few million dollars on something that will probably fail uh and even if it does succeed it you know what just gonna generate a couple millions yeah, it's not worth the risk but if you're gonna ask for something at least ask for more 
like add a few zeros and, and then you, you'll get their attention. I agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I remember also even going up to, to banks uh, and, and just, uh, you know, and my credit wasn't good because of my money was up and down because I was wasting it like crazy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and uh, because I thought at that point, I believed that what you need to have a lot of credit is to make a lot of money. But to have a lot of credit, you need to have solvency. You need to have a good track record of yeah. doing well with the money you have. <laughs> so um, so um, I came up to the banks and, you know, in the past, I would be like, hey, I want to, let's say I want to make a $20,000 loan. They would be, it would say, okay, no problem. Uh, then another 5,000, uh, they would say no, because, you know, we need to take care of this one first. And maybe, maybe a 10,000. Know, so it was like a back and forth. Yes, no, yes, no. But then when I came up uh, after the seminar, I was like, hey, uh, I want to get, I think I asked for like $100,000. And they're like, what for? I'm like, living expenses. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, what do you mean? Uh, but, but, but then um, they took me to the bank manager because I asked so much. So they're not like, oh, you're an idiot. They're like, you know, they were like, please, please make sense of that loan. Please make sense of it because we want to give it to you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, please make it a good loan. So they, they take me to the, <laughs> to the bank manager, the big Z bank manager, you know, and I get coffee and all sorts of just because I asked for a lot of money. And, um, and, and then they're like, uh, okay, so what do you need the, the money for? I'm like, okay, so I'm, I'm, I want to do deals. And I need like one year of money to basically make sure I'm not worried about the, you know, can give me high rates. I'm not, I'm not worried about that. It's small money. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then they told me like, find the deal, find a deal. We'll give you the cash. Like no problem. Yeah, like, exactly. Just add, yeah. like, like put us in the deal, you know, let us, let us play too a bit, you know, give us a percent here. Uh, we'll give you the cash. Absolutely. Exactly. I mean, that's how they're making money at the end of the day, right? Banks. I mean, I remember I had a deal with a business that um, it was so messy. So it got assets in like third world countries. And basically one of, one of the ways to buy a business is to leverage the assets in the business to pay for the, for the seller. And I remember similar situation to yours. I, I came to that bank who was so excited about working with me on that deal. But then when we both realized that some of those assets are hidden in like third world country that, I mean, I remember that they were so, they were so sad. They were like, holy shit, man. Like we're thinking we're going to do this deal together with you. Cause I mean, that's how they're making their bonuses. That's how the bank's making money. I mean, it's a win-win. And like you said, they will feel so much more comfortable giving you the money if you're going to buy that big business. Because I mean, you have the business assets behind you. Versus if you come in as a, like I said, as a kid, no one will give you even $10,000 just because they don't know you. You don't have anything behind you. At the same time, you could be the same kid coming up with a deal, uh, business that's making millions, and they will help you just because they have the assets of that business to back you up. Um, and it's a win-win for everyone. And I think that's something people need to learn from, from even following Dan and the other mentors and gurus out there just understand all the, all that game of money and capital. I mean, everyone out there just want to make more money and just a matter of finding the right deal for them to be happy to, to give you that money. Even for me right now, I'm looking at deals and yes, I have financial institutions backing me up and investors and stuff like that. Um, but then it's still a matter of finding the right deal for everyone to win from that. Um, so yeah, just, just about playing the numbers in the end of the day. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I always tell people this, you know, for anybody who's still watching, because most people stop after the 30 minute mark. Uh, so anybody who's watching right now is probably, uh, you know, uh, really dedicated to applying this. Um, you're not important. Like who this, like who you are, nobody cares. Like the bank doesn't, it, it, they care if that's the only thing to rely on. Like if you go even to, you know, even forget deals. Like you go to a company and you say, okay, I want to help you increase your sales or something. Um, they have to look at you because you're going to ask for money. So they're not, they don't have anything to fall back on. And you don't, you don't have a track record uh, just like you don't because you haven't bought a, a $50 million business yet. 
you know so, so but what they can look at is the deal so if you come up to a company and you're like hey I'm gonna train your salespeople which is something one of my students did I'm gonna train your salespeople uh, to increase their sales by 30% and if I do any less than that in a month in this month then you don't pay me anything but if I do then you pay me like a big amount because I take all the risk on me uh, so it could be a, a small client it could be a, a company it could be a big deal um, nobody cares about you if the deal is good if there's yeah. as little risk and as much upside as possible people are gonna listen so so even in the case of like the you know like me and you like you no know, you're not that much older than me uh, so you could say we're like stupid kids I'm like a stupid kid you're like a stupid adult young adult and uh, and uh, we come up to you know to somebody and we're like hey a million dollar idea blah 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 you know help me a bit I'll give you this much percent it's so whack you know their time is so expensive but the upside is so big the downside is so little it's it's zero so it, it's it's almost a must like they almost can't not take it it's like if somebody came up to you like hey talk to me a bit on the phone give me a bit of advice and there's like a one in a hundred chance that you'll get a couple million of dollars you know just yeah. for that and then that might grow to become even more that you can also leverage to get even more money. So, so it's, it's I agree. It's a win-win for everyone, and, and and even all the all this model of buying companies and playing the differences. So, so if people don't know what what we're trying to do here is we're trying to buy businesses at um, let's say three to five time multiples their profit. So there, there's a way to value a business. There, there's few ways to value a business. The, the easiest one is multiples of profit. So the model is basically go buy businesses at three to five or six times multiples profit or EBITDA or however so, you want to so look at it. So meaning how much the business makes per year times yeah. three to so five. You can get into profit. details. Usually we look at averages of three years. Um, but, but yeah, let's keep it simple. Let's say we want to pay multiples of last year profits or pre-tax profit. Um, the plan is basically let's buy those businesses right now at three to six times multiples. Let's buy a few of them together in the same industry, group them together. And the moment that we have um, a milestone of revenue, so basically a business is valued based on its revenue and profit. Uh, our plan is basically let's buy three to five, group them together, reach a milestone of more revenue and sell them at 10 times multiples profit or go public and then you could trade at 15 or even 20 or whatever the share price is. So it's, I mean, this model of buying businesses, grouping them together, creating a roll-up, it's been out there for many, many years. The problem is that people out there who are not in the corporate finance world, they just don't know it exists. So, so correct me if I'm wrong, because I have this analogy in my head for probably since Dan's Castle. Uh, so the way I view it is like there's a, there's a building and you buy an apartment there. and Leverage, of course. You don't have the money, but you buy an apartment there because you can convince the bank that you know somebody's going to rent it and it's going to pay the mortgage so the, it's going to pay the mortgage and there's going to be more money you know uh, left it's not just going to be tight um and and then again the only difference is that in this case like the, you need to get a renter but but it's like if it's a business like there's always been a renter always always been cash flow mm -hmm. so you buy that apartment and then you buy another apartment there and then another one and then another one and now you have a building. Yeah. So now that you have the building, a building is worth a lot more than is worth more than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. And also, you're waiting, uh, just like the financial crisis of 2008, for building for rents and prices and everything to go up. It's called the market mania. You know, it could be because of the business, could be because of the market for like an up cycle, a bull market. Yeah. And then at the peak, like as high up as you can possibly get you bam you unload everything and you get you multiples because of both because of the the combination you know you um it's not it's not fragmented you combined like a big thing of a lot of small pieces together to one big thing and also because it's the best time of the year or the best time of the decade to sell and you get just what dan did basically just a big big sell yeah pretty much you just it's a bit different with real estate, um, but the fact because the beauty the beauty in uh, in business is again it's the multiples. The, the the more profit you make, the more revenue you have, the more your 
the more your business is going to be worth. Uh, but yeah, you, you got it. It's basically buying at X few of those small businesses, bringing them together, creating a business that's worth much more. And then just by the fact that it's worth it more, sell it at a higher price or take it public and keep growing it. Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I, I like to equate uh, business with real estate in this case, because you yeah. and I- No, it's we're, very, very similar, yeah. We're from uh, Israel, so, so um, rent prices here go up faster than the business revenues. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> it kind of feels like it. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, I know. That's a, that's a, that's a whole different topic, but yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So, so Moran, uh, any, any final word for anybody who's considering to start? Because again, everybody in my audience is, is like a massive action freak, but some of them are like also kind of the big thing. Like they don't want to take the path that I suggest, you know, of building a business and, and to have, you know, living freely, freely, you know, traveling. They want to just get to it. Um, mm -hmm. How should they start? So... Because, because we both know that if they knew what you and I know, yeah. they could literally just start doing you know, calls, email, just, just make it happen. Yeah. So they, they're missing the information, they're missing the, prop, you know, the, the, execute, the, the exact plan. I, I agree 100%. So I guess it depends. If, it, if they have existing business, the next step is to just look for other businesses they can buy. Um, if no, they specifically, have, specifically somebody who doesn't, who, who have doesn't have experience. So if you have no experience at all, no track record, nothing, then you want to find a partner or uh, a dream team. Uh, that's the way Dan called them partner, dream team, joint venture partners, people who already have track record who could, who you could give equity in your deal for doing literally all the work. Um, and you will basically ride their track record. Um, if you want to get into this world of deals, um, I'm happy to, to, to help you a little bit. And maybe you could use my team as your board members, as your dream team, because I got an amazing dream team. And yeah, you just want to start. So obviously you want to pick an industry, you want to get focused, you want to have track record behind you and then just start looking for deals. I mean, I know Dan is all about build your dream team, get accountants, get lawyers, get financial institutions but to be honest and that's some, something people don't understand um, after you go to the castle that's when the work starts right that's where like the actual work is finding a deal i mean you could I, I can tell you that robbie if you if you have the right deal you could get all the accountants and all the lawyers in the world to work for you for and, and the millionaires everyone everyone you want um yeah. But it's just a matter of finding the deal. So I'd say, yeah, go find yourself um, someone to ride their track record, um, some kind of a dream team, and just start looking for deals. And yeah. if you need help from there, just talk to me because I have already relationships with institutions and accountants and lawyers and all that stuff. Yeah, and, and I think the thing that people would most appreciate about your help, which I never got from Dan, is you know how do you actually you know, contact people, how do you actually, you know, in terms of the deals, like, and something that I think you do very well, you know, reach out to people regarding buying the businesses. Um, mm -hmm. For and me, it, I never yeah, knew how to do that. Yeah. And, and it's funny with Dan, that's something that I learned after that uh, literally so many things that he, for, you know, that sentence that the things I forgot you didn't learn yet. That's literally his case. Like he knows, I mean, he's been through so much and literally, He's talking about things from such a higher level on, on deals that sometimes, yeah, someone who just started out is missing a lot of those steps. So uh, I can definitely relate to what you're saying, but then it just, it just the fact that Dan got so much experience and he just, he literally forgot all of those things that some of us didn't learn yet. Yeah. So, so it's useful if he's coaching you, but it's not useful if you're trying to kind of uh, d disseminate information from what he's saying. Yeah. It, it, I mean, People who already have experience in business and corporate finance could understand and, and figure out those. those well, uh, well, those people do. don't watch Dan anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, there are points that you could say missing out, but uh, it's just a matter of figuring out yourself and just taking, I mean, you will figure out some of those things just by taking action. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean if I, definitely if I had like a bit more of a clear roadmap, I might have stuck to it for a longer period um, mm. because it, it is so simple. It's so it's sick how simple it is. Yeah. And, and nowadays I have also, you know, a lot more 
kind of outside pressures because my life, you know, the older you get, the more responsibilities you have, the more things you need to take care of. So, I mean, I really, really, really regret not learning more about this when I was like 18 or 19 or 20, when I was like full of ambition and literally could, you know, just sleep in my parents' home. Uh, not, you know, nobody knew me, no business obligations, no ups, no downs. And I was just free, you know, with a couple of thousand dollars to buy food, to buy, you know, everything you need, the basics. I could have done it for years and nobody would have told me anything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anybody who has a lot of free time <laughs> and tons of ambition uh, and no experience, believe it or not, you're actually in the best possible position uh, to make this happen. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't if, you, if you're not. It just means uh, it, will, it will be harder, you know, just like if you're older. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. There's just a there's a bit of a learning a learning curve to get into this world. That's that's all, and it's just a matter of yeah, just staying patient to to get there. Yeah, and you can really stop whenever you want. I mean, you can get, you know, you can uh, have the board and like say fuck it, and just open your own company. You can have the board and get a deal, and that's it. You can have a board and start combining companies. You can have a board and try to sell a company. I, there's no it's not like you're this is something I didn't know when I started that just getting the board doesn't mean you're committed because I, because I thought that because they said okay we'll do it for you we'll do it with you we'll be in the board mm -hmm. I thought that means that like they they're committed you know that, yeah. that they're like that they're like um, how do I explain it that they're like, oh, Robbie, you said you're going to do this. You know, you said you'll do it. What the fuck? No, I, I, I know what he's saying. I know what he's saying. The, the moment you got your board, it's the moment you need to start showing that you were serious. Um, that's yeah. when the actual work starts. After you get the board, <laughs> after you get the accountants, after you get the financial institutions, mm -hmm. that's where the, the real work starts. I, I agree 100%. Yeah, and then they don't give a fuck. I mean, they like yeah. for them, it's like, yeah, do it, don't do it. I don't care. It's like five, a few minutes of my time. Like, exactly. Like, you could die. It doesn't matter. Just you have a deal. Tell me. It's I can exactly. help you, guide you, but if you don't have a, a deal, then exactly, it's up to you. And it's funny because people, I know people, uh, people ask Dan a lot of time, like, um, what are you gonna do when you're gonna find a deal? Like, those guys are not gonna steal your deal or something like that. And you need to understand, as you said, those people are usually already busy with doing something with their lives they don't want to steal your deal they, they unless unless you have like a really cool deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> like oh. another load <laughs> yeah yeah like, and, and even then and even then you're going to learn a ton even if they're going to steal your deal so I'm oh, gonna, yeah, wow. oh, yeah oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah how to steal deals yeah. um yeah i mean yeah if it's like even a few million dollars they're like you're like oh my god i need to keep it and they're like eat no <laughs> they don't exactly they don't care about it they just they're just i mean some of those people i mean it really depends who they are and what they're doing already but some of those people just want to help because they've been in your shoes um so you're just like yeah, yeah. and, and it's, so it, it's, rare. It's, 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 so, it's so rare to find somebody who's you know actually thinking this big because because yeah. you know successful people people think they want to keep you down but you know most of them they want to help you and like when they see you thinking this big, mm -hmm. they're like, wow, like, I, like, because, because it's like, it's like you get this successful. Nobody, you can't make somebody jump to this level. You know, they have to go through the steps, you know, read the, you know, read Tony Robbins, do this, do that, you know, go open a business and, and slowly fail, become successful. And you're like the guy who's like, I'm willing to play at this level because I realize that it's in the game, you know, it's in the, in the head. Uh, so I don't have to go through the steps and they're like, yeah, like, yeah, they like, you know, awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, most of them, some of them are skeptical and they're like, okay, I, I don't know. Yeah, what I mean, fair enough. It's like everything. It's numbers games. I mean, like, but nobody, not a single guy told me like, you're not going to be able to do that. It's not going to be. Exactly. Okay. So I guess you have to go now. Yeah. I'm gonna hang out with those people. Yeah. I got, I got another, another call with this business owner now. <laughs> okay so i'm not going to keep you anyway no uh thanks so much for your time and My pleasure. Uh, and hopefully we'll uh give some more content to the audience let me know if there's uh i'm talking to the audience uh let me know if there's more questions or anything you need to know um 
I'll try to get Moran to do another quick one with me. Thanks a lot, dude. And uh, I put the link to get to you, like the email, uh, for anybody who wants to contact you. And uh, if you want to do deals, I mean, that's your guy. Please don't talk to me anymore about Dan. Contact him. <laughs> cool. Good stuff, man. Had a, uh, thank you. Thank you for, for having me here. Yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.